Earth is a board game about scoring points that features two things, some lovely landscape photography and more symbols than you'll find at a road sign convention. At the beginning of a game of Earth, you'll have an island, and your island will tell you how much dirt you start with, but not how much you end with. That'll be a ton more, in all likelihood, so you can think of this as your seed capital. You'll spend this dirt to add plants and terrain to your own personal ecosystem, which will be arranged in a very natural-looking 4x4 grid somewhere near you, close enough to allow you to read all the text on each card and discern its iconography. As soon as either you or one of your up to four friends completes their 4x4 grid, Earth is over, and whoever has the most points wins. As you might imagine, every card you add to your grid will be laden with point scoring potential that may be enhanced by where exactly on your grid they end up. Sandwich the right swamp between two juicy species of mold and your grid will be dripping with points by game's end. And that's a sentence I will never say again. Pepper your planes with plants to plump them with points. Fill your fecund fields with fungi. Cover your caves with curvaceous cultivations and points. So many points, all yours, and, and you might even win, but that shouldn't matter because Earth, as it turns out, is not about winning, but we'll get to that later. Card placement isn't the only opportunity for scoring points, oh no. Make your plants grow for more points, make them grow so much that natural laws intervene to prevent them from growing any further for even more, then throw some sprouts on them for more. Curate them to fulfill requirements for each of the three ecosystem cards in play for more points. Fine tune them further to attract animals into your environment for shovelfuls more. Got extra cards clogging up your hand that you have no use for? Throw them in your compost pile for a point a pop. Points. Points everywhere. It's like you've knocked over a display case at an international conference for phlebotomists. And that's all stuff you've seen before. Paying stuff to put stuff on the table to score points. That's every game to have come out in the last 50 years, albeit explained in a very reductive manner. But Earth is not like those other dry as dust, brain burning engine builders. And that's all thanks to a sexy little mechanic we call simultaneous play. On your turn in Earth, you can choose to perform one of four actions. You might want to add cards to your grid, you might want to gather some dirt, you might want to put some sprouts on plants you have in your grid already, or perhaps draw some cards to give you more options in future turns. While you take your action, all of your friends will be able to take a miniature version of that action. So that if you chose to plant, for example, you would be able to add two cards to your grid while they would have the option to add one. After everyone is done taking their action, you'll move to the next step of your turn in which all relevant plant abilities will trigger. And I know what you're thinking, plant abilities, that sounds weird. And well, it, it is a little weird, but it's cool. Each action has a color that aligns with colors printed on your plant cards. Whenever someone takes an action, all of the plants in your grid with abilities printed in that matching color will trigger. At first, this part of a turn will snap by, as most people will have one or two relevant abilities to trigger. But as the game reaches its peak and toward the end of it, every turn will initiate an orgy of mud packing, compost slinging, sprouting, and growth that will put even the most outlandish exploits committed by the most passionate gardening hobbyists to shame. And allow me to remind you that this is happening every time anyone takes a turn. So if you calibrate your engine just right, the entire experience will be one unending banquet of horticulture. Can you imagine anything more fantastic? I know you can't, because something more fantastic just doesn't exist.
Even though at times building out your 4x4 grid can feel less like you're conducting the London Symphony Orchestra and more like you're the choir teacher for a glee club composed entirely of tone-deaf howler monkeys, all of this engine building and combo fusing keeps the serotonin flowing. And Earth is as rich and as nutrient-packed as the dark loam of a rainforest floor, with one and a half times the fun. But Earth is more than that. Truth is, Earth might bother you just a bit. But you don't want to hear me talk about that. No, you don't want to hear about how its presentation is thick with visual clutter. Or that the fact that it's smothered with more hieroglyphics than a pharaoh's tomb makes it harder to learn than it really needs to be. But people like me don't exist to tell you what you want to hear. People like me exist to tell you the truth. So here it is. Look at this card and keep in mind that this is a totally normal one. I just picked it off the top of the deck. There's over 200 of these in the deck and they're all unique. To know what to do with it, you gotta pay attention to this symbol right here. That'll tell you what type of plant it is. You also gotta pay attention to the color in this ribbon right here. That'll tell you when it'll do something special. But that ain't all. You also gotta look at these symbols up here and you gotta cross-reference all those with the other cards you've got in your grid. The ecosystem card you got on your player board and the two other ecosystem cards in the middle and the four animal cards out there to see if they all line up in such a way as to give you the most points. There's also no maximum hand size, so you could have literally 20 some odd cards swimming around in your hand, each of them with their own libraries of symbols. And that's gonna get y'all feeling real excited or like somebody just dropped a cinder block on your big toe. What you're seeing here is a standard grid in the mid game. Look at all this text, these green cubes, these baby bottle looking things. When you're triggering abilities, it's not so bad. You just look for the right colors and follow the symbols. But whenever you gotta add a new card to your spread, it gets real complicated. The busyness will either get you as excited as a toad in a bucket of flies or as terrified as one at the sight of wart remover. Also, some of these symbols look mighty similar. Take these, for instance. One means putting a card into your compost pile from your hand. The other means composting a card from the draw pile. And these. One's talking about the maximum growth a plant can have. The other's talking about the number of growth counters on a plant. Interpreting them correctly makes a big difference. And they're easily confused after you've been playing for an hour or so, especially because they're usually tiny. There's so many symbols running around that the game even prints a whole index of them right on your player board. But the definitions for some symbols are too cryptic to really help you understand what they actually mean. Like this one. All it says is VP from growth. Like I said, that's referring to the number of growth counters on your plants, it's very confusing because you get victory points for having growth counters on your plants, but you also get victory points for maxing out the number of growth counters you can have on said plants. So it's hard to tell what the symbol's talking about. And that other fella talked up a big game about simultaneous play earlier, that's only half true. By the time you get to the end game, you're gonna be stuck behind someone triggering all their mushrooms, I guarantee it. And one last thing, by the time this whole game is over, you'll have no no idea how many points you've scored or anybody else at the table. And that number could be anything from 82 to 382. You just won't know until it's all counted up. And that's a little bit annoying for a game that wants you to think real hard about everything you're doing. All right, that Solon gentleman shared some important observations, but his last one is a little more subjective. Everyone I have played this with has said specifically that they like the fact that they don't know what their score is until the game is over. They said it relieved some pressure and allowed them to just enjoy the process of gluing things together to see what they did. Burying everyone's scores under an avalanche of calculations allowed them to better enjoy spending time together and saying things sometimes like, oh, did you know that 
there's such a thing as the Florida Strangler or the Chicken of the Woods. And that brings me to my final observation about Earth, which is that Earth has many points, but winning isn't one of them. And that may seem strange, but in practice, your final score is not as important or as enjoyable as the process of increasing it. In Earth, you and your friends all become amateur mechanics trying to build planes from scratch in your backyards. You'll all have your own quiet journeys with your own individual struggles, and when it's over, you'll all gather together and see how far your planes fly. And the person whose plane flies the farthest will technically be the winner. But really, everyone will feel like they have won because the process of the project, the time you spent in one another's company was what ultimately mattered. If you are looking for a game that will challenge your ability to process large amounts of information while giving you some nice landscape photography to look at and a few bursts of dopamine for an engine well built, Earth would be a strong choice. It's also a good option if you have a botanist or a biology enthusiast in your life, though I have no idea how accurate Earth happens to be in its representations of biological phenomena. So hopefully your botanist friend won't be in agony over having to plant bleeding tooth fungus next to an African baobab if that's not a real thing that happens in actual plants. I don't know because I know nothing about bleeding tooth fungus or African baobabs, although I did see a baobab in Disney World once. It was pretty neat. If you like your games rich with intrigue and politics and confrontation, backroom deals, and shot through with roguish streaks of chance, I do not recommend Earth at all. Same goes for anyone whose heart skipped a beat when they saw all those symbols. And that's okay. If you like nature photography all that much, you can always buy a calendar. That is the video. Thank you so much for joining me as we looked at Earth. I hope you enjoyed this little trip. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. You can also follow us around on social media. We've got a TikTok and an Instagram. We usually upload more lifestyle kind of content there, so if you'd like to see silly little top fives and other stuff, check us out there. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next one. Sometimes it means the world. Sometimes it means dirt. Whether we're talking planet names or board games, we all know it's Earth. Get out of here.